Hmm. I don't know what else to say. All right, I'm out. Make sure to like and subscribe. Hey there, I'm Dan, the self-proclaimed lonely rocker. Welcome to this episode of I Don't Have a Band. And yes, today we are taking a look at the Rev G8 noise gate pedal. And no, I'm not playing on the gate thing, G8 thing that's been done to death. So we're just going to take a look at the pedal. Uh, but this is episode 95 of I Don't Have a Band. So to commemorate this collaboration here, my good friends at Rev are fellow Canadians. They're a little bit west of me. So I wanted to take a look at who wore number 95 for the Winnipeg Jets. So I got my crack team on it to see what we can find out. Let's see. Ah, f no one ever wore 95 for the Jets. Well, so much for that idea. Well, in lieu of that, I took a look at the 1995 roster and there was a player by the name of Luciano Borsato. A pass me the puck or I'm gonna break your fucking balls. Quite a name for a hockey player, but he did score 15 goals twice in a season. Quite a feat to pull off in the NHL. Anyways, episode 95, Rev G8. Uh, we're going to be talking about this pedal. Now, the great thing about this pedal, there's features that this noise gate pedal has. It's not typical with most noise gate pedals. It's going to give you a lot of extra control. Some people are calling it a smart gate. I don't know if it's any smarter than the dumb pedals that I stomp on all the time, but there's enough features here that are going to make you smarter with your noise gate effects. Now, in doing my research, there's one thing I noticed is that why are most noise gate pedal reviews kind of like this? I mean, don't jazz players have to contend with noise? Holy jeez! Huh! I don't know what impression was worse. Well, maybe I should just get with the program. I've got three different scenarios, three different ways you can hook up this pedal, and I'm gonna walk you through that right now. First scenario, we're looking at the simplest way to set up the pedal, and that's sort of typical with uh, you know, your average way of setting up any stomp box, where you're going to take your guitar's patch cable, you're going to plug into the input, and then you're going to take the output, and you're going to go straight into the amp. Now, in terms of detecting you know, when the gate is supposed to close and open, it's listening to the guitar, and that's, in my opinion, the best way to do it, but we're only going to be able to tackle any noise that's coming from the pickup. Now, if your amp is generating any noise, well, we're going to cover that in scenario number two. But I'm going to take this opportunity just to walk you through the pedal a little bit, so we can see the different features. So like I said, we're using the in and out. Uh, we do have a send and return here, which is gonna apply in the second scenario, so hang on for that one. But we have three dials here on the pedal itself. We have a threshold, uh, we have a, a hold, and we have a release. Now, a threshold, if you think like a compressor, that determines the level when the compressor jumps into action, and then what it does is determined by the other features. It's much like this gate here, where the threshold is gonna set the level of when the gate's gonna attempt to close, and then based on the other two factors on how it's gonna close the gate. Uh, the hold is gonna determine how long the gate's gonna hold on as it's closing, to keep it open just a little bit longer. And then the release is kind of like a taper. So, you know, if you have it all the way off, you're just gonna slam the door. But if you have it on a, a much higher setting, it's almost going to be like a fade out, a nice gradual fade out. So that's determined by these two settings here. It really comes down to the type of part you're playing. Now, for me, and I should stress that I'm here in a home studio environment. So the gate that I'm using here, uh, the fact that it has a lot of settings like this really works well for my workflow. Now, some people would argue, well, if it's a smart gate, what if I'm playing live and I want to change the settings? I said, well, that applies to virtually every pedal out there set the, the sweet spot and just uh, play, you'll be perfectly fine. But here in the studio, the fact that I have different settings here, depending on the type of part that I'm playing, is really, really great. And one thing I will say is I do have a number of plugins that can deal with noise that I can deal with in the mix, but there's nothing like getting rid of noise at source. You know, even the best software I find, you know, if I, if I put too many plugins, it starts to artifact and weird things start to happen. So I like to tackle that noise from source. So this is really effective in that case. So let me demonstrate here, we'll turn it off and you hear the terrible noise that we're getting. So the gate's doing a great job, but let's take a look, we'll play around with the threshold here. This noise we're all familiar with. I'm gonna slowly turn up the threshold. 
and it's, it detects that as noise. Even though it's still on, but not getting any noise from the strings, that's great. Now I'm gonna use this string noise as a way to demonstrate how the hold setting works here. So if I have it all the way down, but as I turn it up, you hear more noises coming through. It's like it's more aggressive when it's on the lowest setting, but it opens up as we, as we turn it higher. And then with the release, I'll actually play a real note to demonstrate that. I'm gonna put the release all the way down. I'll play a note here. Here abruptly it just cuts off. Now if I turn it all the way up, You hear how it sort of fades out nicely. Now, depending on the part that you're playing, I think this works great for melodies. You know, when you want to hold notes, you want to have a little bit more sustain. Uh, if you're playing chords and maybe, you know, you're chugging real hard, you know, the, the gate's going to naturally stay open anyways. It's, you know, if you force it closed too hard, obviously you might start to hear it like almost like a rhythmical closing. That might be an effect that you want. But I find definitely with lead and melody playing, I would uh, open up the hold a little bit have the release a bit higher so that sort of tapers out a little bit. It's not so abrupt, more natural feeling. And really that's the key is to be able to keep it sounding natural. Some gates that don't have the extra settings, you have like a hard and a soft and that's pretty much it. But in this case, you can play with the three knobs to find the most natural settings. So you're not cutting off the, the important notes and it just sounds natural and you're really just getting rid of most of the noise. All right, in the second scenario, I'm utilizing the effects loop of the amp and plugging the Rev G8 through that effects loop. So the, the guitar has no effect whatsoever on the gating. Now it's all based on what's happening in the amplifier. Let's take a look how that's connected. For this setup, you need to plug your guitar directly into the main input on your amplifier. The input on the G8 goes to the effects loop send on your amp, and the output of the G8 connects to the effects loop return on your amplifier. So if you listen, like, you've got that sort of cycle hum in the background. and the hum is gone. Now the thing with this method is, I have other issues here in this room, is that the guitar itself has no bearing. It's bringing all of that noise back. So if my guitar was perfectly clean and there wasn't any issues and I just wanted to address the amp itself, this would be a great way to hook up the gate. But in this case, it's not working so good for me because I am generating a lot of noise, especially with the single coil pickups in this guitar. Uh, that's not helping me here. But if your issue is purely inside the amplifier, you don't want to touch the guitar. Some people are sensitive to hooking up a gate to the guitar. You can uh, knock out that noise from your amplifier by going through the effects loop. Well, if the gate hasn't closed on you yet and you're still watching this video, perhaps you'd consider clicking the like button. It goes a long way to supporting this channel, and I really appreciate that. Of course, you can leave a comment, you can share this video, and ultimately, if you like what I'm doing here, you can click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. If you want to do a deeper dive with me, I am on Patreon. I'll link that down below. All right, let's get back to the Rev G8. So let's take a look at scenario number three. Now this is the main reason why I wanted to do this video in the first place, because it combines all the different features of the pedal to create the most optimal noise gate filtering. We've got the effects loop, we've got the, the inputs here all working together. I mean, the guitar really is sort of the detection device, because I think that's the most accurate way to determine when a gate's going to close. It needs to know when you're playing the important notes, and it needs to know when you're backing off. It's going to be able to do that by listening to the playing that you're doing, but to be also be able to attack the noise coming from the amplifier, we you need to utilize the effects loop. So this four cable method is utilizing everything to make that happen. Now I have to admit when I first set this up, I set it up wrong and I thought there was something wrong with the pedal, but now there's something wrong with me. So let's take a closer look at the schematic to make sure we get this patching set up right. Pay close attention to this setup. You plug your guitar directly into the input on the G8. The output of the G8 plugs into the effects loop return on your amp. The return on the G8 plugs into the send in your amp's effects loop and the send on the G8 plugs into the main input on your amp. Got all that? Maybe take one more look. So now that we have the best of both worlds set up here, let me take you through a couple of the settings just so you can really get an idea of what the different dials on this pedal actually do. So in this case, we're gonna put the threshold here. It's around two o'clock. I'm gonna put the hold all the way down. I'm gonna keep the release just uh, sort of at noon here. Let's take a listen to that. So very, very natural. We're not really hearing any noise. It doesn't feel like it's getting cut off. I kind of like that setting. So what I'm gonna do is now let's jack up the, uh, the hold. I'm gonna put it all the way up now so you can hear the difference. So 
So you can hear how the gate's sort of hanging open just a little bit longer. So now using the release, I'm gonna jack that all the way up. Now take a listen to the difference now. Sort of fades out like this slow fade. So you can see, and really it depends on the type of parts that you're gonna be playing. And, and this is where I feel this is a really effective tool here in the studio, is because I have a lot, of, a lot of different ways to approach this. If I was playing more melodies where I needed the gate to be a little bit more forgiving, sort of easing in and out a little bit, I would definitely set the release a lot higher, open up the hold a little bit longer. If I was playing chords and sort of, you know, more constant playing, then I could turn the hold down, ease off on the release a little bit, and uh, the gate's gonna stay open anyways, just based on my playing. And utilizing this setup, like I said, getting the best of both worlds. We're attacking all the noise in both scenarios and we're gonna get some really, really great results. Well, I've gotta say, I'm really impressed with the Rev G8, really versatile noise gate pedal. I mean, I gotta hand it to Rev. I mean, it's not the sexiest thing they could have made, but it's a very necessary tool, especially for guys like me that are recording just to knock out that noise. Uh, we're recording all different situations and it certainly helps to have a good noise gate around and I'll definitely be putting this to a lot of use. Buy a the G8 or I'm gonna break your fucking balls. Well, if you've made it this far, I'd love to know who you are. Perhaps you can just drop me a note in the comments. And it's at this point, I got to give a special mention to uh, my Patreon of the week or patron of the week. Uh, one of my gold members, uh, I'm going to put their name up here somewhere. Thanks so much for your support. If you want to see your name in lights, hop on over to Patreon. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, my gold members get a mention in my videos. If that's a perk for you, you can find us over at Patreon. Uh, definitely use one of the engagement options. Like I said, it really helps this channel. But most importantly, I hope I'm going to see you again in another video. I'm going to give you a couple options right now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and or leaving a comment. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you can do by yourself right from your own home. I hope to see you again in another video.